Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about print on demand everything. So if that is a subject that you're interested in learning about, please hit like and subscribe and stick around. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this design right here. It's a pretty simple New Year's design that can be scaled out immensely. So if you are interested in learning how to do this, go ahead and stick around. Okay. So here we are on Canva's home page and we are going to be making a design for New Year's today. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the right hand corner where it says custom size and we're going to be making a t-shirt design. So for that, I like to design with 4,500 by 5,400 pixels and we'll hit create design and it will pull up a blank page. Um, so here we have our blank page. I am going to be designing for a black shirt or optimizing for black. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the background color up here in the left hand side of the page and I'm going to select black. So that's where I'm going to be designing for. Now I'm going to keep it pretty simple. It's going to say Happy New Year 2024, but the cool thing about this one is we are going to be able to scale it out based on locations so this one is going to say happy new year 2024 las vegas and then you can scale that out to include any number of cities states countries wherever you think people might be partying and celebrating new year's eve um, and just start putting locations so you can see how you could scale this out pretty dramatically um, so i'm going to start easy we're just going to hit t on the keyboard that'll pull up a text box and for the first box it's just going to say happy and that's going to go right along the top so i can drag that out so it's nice and big and now we're going to pull up another text box so just hit t on your keyboard to pull up a text box and you can just drag out the corners to make it bigger so the next one is going to say um oops new year's oh. Uh, new year and then exclamation points yeah I like that and we'll go ahead and drag that one out so it's pretty big too and then one more text box here this one's gonna say 2024 and then the last text box is gonna be your location so hit T on the keyboard one more time now you can pick any location you want and again we can scale this out quite a bit but I'm gonna go with Las Vegas because why not and so we'll go ahead and throw Vegas down here. And so that is the gist of the design. So now this design is going to be a lot about picking fonts and it's going to be a lot about, I'm going to throw a cool clipping mask on it too. Um, so let's go ahead and pick some fonts. Now you can do anything you want. You'd like it to be big and bold, right? Um, we want it to fill the whole page. But I've already looked through several fonts that I like and I came up for this first line with a font um, called Monotone. Where is it? Right there. And it gives sort of that almost vintage style line kind of look. So I liked that one right there. It was definitely a little bit different. Boom. And now for the next line, for New Year, I was going to pick another one. This one, I was gonna do one called uh, Gillum Bold. So I typed Gillum Bold in here, and now you can see it says Gillum. Uh, anytime you see this little arrow next to the font, that means that you, you can go ahead, click that, and it's going to bring down different versions. So there's thin, irregular, bold, black. I had selected bold because it was nice and thick for that one, and just a really clean, easy to read, bold fonts. And again, I'm gonna make it go all the way across the whole top of the page. Maybe bring it in just a smidge, make sure everything looks centered. And then for 2024, I picked one called St. George. Now you'll probably spend the most time just looking through fonts, trying to figure out what works best. And so there's all different ways you can look through fonts depending on what you want. You can search for script fonts, you can search for bold fonts, you can search narrow, um, display fonts, stencil fonts. And so you can go ahead and always, you know, try to narrow your search down based on what it is you think you want if you don't know the name of the font. But that is usually what takes the longest. 
The good thing about making um, scalable designs though is that once you have made that decision, now you can scale out a whole bunch of designs using the exact same font, exact same layout and all of that. So it makes it pretty easy. And so then the last one I was going to do was going to be Las Vegas. This one I was going to do more of a script style font. And the one that I had come up with after looking for a while was one called Ledgewood. Yeah, Ledgewood Regular. There we go. And so now some of these I did go ahead and download from Creative Fabrica. So you can always go on Creative Fabrica. There's tons of free fonts on there that you can get and you can download them and you can just upload them right onto Canva and use them. So I do have a lot of fonts that I do use from Creative Fabrica and this was one that I know I did go ahead and upload from there. I'm gonna put it at a little bit of a diagonal, something like that. So I think that looks pretty cool there. And so that is more or less my design. Now I am gonna go ahead and put a clipping mask on here. Um, you don't have to, of course you can keep it white or you can make any of these any solid colors or a mixture of solid colors. But I think something, you know, fun New Year's Eve may look kind of cool. So let's go ahead and just do that. So I'm gonna go ahead, title this, uh, Happy New Year. Um, I'm just gonna put mask, oh, I'm sorry, not mask, uh, frame. So this is gonna be my frame. And I can come to the top where it says share. If you click that and you go down to where you see download, um, it is gonna be a PNG, that's what you want. Right now, it, the size is set for one, which means that it is the dimensions that I put in, the 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. If you wanted that to be bigger, for example, I could change this to 1.5 and it's going to multiply these numbers by 1.5 to make it bigger. So if you were printing on something large like a blanket, that is how I would make it bigger. I would go ahead and change that to you know 1.5 probably and that would be more than enough to do it. But right now I'm gonna leave it alone. I do need a transparent background for my frame so I'll click that and then I just hit download. Okay, so now I have my frame. Now I can go ahead and select a mask. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the left-hand side of the page where I have all of my tabs. I'm going to go up to the tab that says element and we'll go ahead and we'll do a search. And so I think I was going to do something like gold sparkle is what I'm looking for. Some sort of a gold sparkle and I did background. And you can uh, filter by graphics, you can filter by photos. For this one, I went ahead and looked at photos. So I just went see all on the photos. And there are a ton of really cool, like here's an example of one that's sort of just that gold sparkle that'll give it just a little bit of a texture and give it that cool gold color, which we you know tend to associate with New Year's. And so there's lots of you know, different golds that you can do. There's the gold glitters, the sparkles, um, some different gradients that you can do. So lots of fun ways that we can do this. And you may, you know, try a couple of them out. So you may go ahead and download a few of them and see sort of what looks best. You do want it to be somewhat light in color. If you're doing it for a black shirt, you want it to pop. So don't pick anything that's too dark. If you do do a glitter mask, and I do do a lot of glitter masks, just be aware it's not actually going to print as glitter. It's going to, you know, give a textured look just because it's using different colors when it prints, but it won't be glitter. So make sure that you in no way, shape or form use the word glitter in titles, tags, anything like that, because you don't want to, um, well, uh, well, first of all, you know, Amazon merch won't let you use the word glitter. It'll get uh, rejected right away. But even if you were doing it on something like Etsy, you just don't want that people to think that they're getting glitter and they're not. So just be careful of the way that you uh, title it. But I do, I do use glitter masks quite a lot and they do look good. Um, and I do have a video, by the way, on that if uh, you wanted to see how certain designs really print. If you go up to my channel, I, I have a video and it just goes over how glitter masks would print, how gradients would print, how different textures and photos and other things would print. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, check out my channel and I've got something on that. Um, I'm gonna go back up to the top. So I kind of liked this first one here. It was kind of cool. It gives sort of a sparkly look. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with this one and I might go ahead and just turn it vertically, something like that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cover your whole design up with your mask. And so oops, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna have to bring it to the front. By the way, to, to work with layers, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I like to just hit control and if I hit my right bracket, it's going to bring it to the front. 
if I hit control in my left bracket, it is going to bring it to the back. And you can do that as many times as you need to, to bring a layer all the way to the front or all the way to the back or wherever you want it. And so that's one easy way to, to work with layers. Now, like I said, there's a few other ways that you can do it, but that's just, for me, the fastest is if you use the controls on the keyboard, it just makes everything a lot more efficient. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this right over my design, something like that. Now I can see how it's going to look on the letters below. If I want to, I can come up to the top. You'll see a little checkered box here. It says transparency. If you click that, you can bring that transparency down so that you can see the letters underneath. And so by doing that, you can kind of see the way things are going to line up on your design. And so if you ever wanna check how a clipping mask is going to look, that is the easiest way to do it. And so I might make it really fade and then you can kind of see where all those little blotches are going to show up on your letters. And so that is an easy way to handle that. Now you don't want it to have any transparency when you download it. Um, just because it's going to be your mask, you want it to be nice and solid. So I'm gonna change the title up here from frame to mask, and I'm gonna download this one more time. This time it does not need to be a transparent background because the mask is only going to go over the frame, so we can just hit download as is. There we go. And now um, the way that I do uh, clipping masks what I find is the fastest and most efficient way of doing things is just to jump over to PhotoP, which is just another website. So if you just open up a new tab in your browser and put PhotoP, it's gonna pull up this page right here. And this is a totally free site. You don't even have to make an account or anything. So you can just literally put it in your browser. Here it is. You hit open from computer. That will pull up your downloads and you'll start by selecting your frame that you just downloaded and it'll pull up your frame right here. And now all you have to do is go back up to the left-hand corner where it says file. About three spaces down, there's a tab that says open in place. If you click that, it'll pull up your downloads again and then you can select the mask that you just made. And what it'll do is put the mask right over the top of your frame. So it should look just like this. Now your layers are here on the right hand side. You've got your background layer and then you've got your mask layer on top and it's the one that's selected. Assuming your page looks just like this, all you would have to do is go to the top, move over to where you see layer. If you select that about halfway down, you'll see a tab called clipping mask. All you have to do is click that and it'll automatically put the clipping mask right on top of your frame. And it really should be that fast and that easy. And you can do this as many times as you like. So once you have it the way you want it, we just have to export it. So we'll go up to the top left-hand side where it says file, click there about halfway down. It'll say export as you're going to select PNG. And if you give it a second, a little box is going to pop up right here and it's got your title so if you wanted to retitle it now you could um, it's still 4500 by 5400 still a png you usually don't have to do anything but hit save and it will save it and then all you have to do is jump right back over to canva and so that is how i do my clipping masks because it is just really fast and easy and convenient when it comes to designing there are always a ton of different ways that you can achieve the same results you want to find the way that's the easiest and the most efficient for you. So, um, you know, if something takes you, you know, 10 minutes to do, but you can do it in 30 seconds, pick the way that's going to be 30 seconds, obviously. So that's, that's why I use PhotoP really fast, easy for clipping masks. So now what I'm going to do is just upload the design that I just made on PhotoP. So to do that, I'll go over to the left-hand side where it says uploads. I'm going to go ahead and click upload files. That'll pull up your um, downloads and you can go ahead and just select the, the download that you just had from PhotoP. And so here, boom, so there it is. So it looks really nice. I can show you on another page. So if I hit add page, I can go ahead and bring this over so that you can take a look. And there it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it fill the whole page. And so that's what it will look like. So it's not white 
You know, like the original version was just white. It's still a nice light color. It's sort of a golden champagne color and it just gives a little bit of texture. You can kind of see where the little circles are and the O's and different shades there. So I like the way that that looks. Now you don't have to do anything else to it. Matter of fact, you didn't even have to download it. You could have just taken um, the version that you just saved from Photopea and stuck it on um, whatever site you use for printing. But if you wanted to do anything else with it, um, for example, if I wanted to add an outline, if I wanted to um, change any of the, um, like the shades, if I wanted to make it lighter or darker or, you know, add contrast or add more saturation, I could do that. I could go and use my edit photo features and I could go to the top. It's on effects right now. You could hit adjust. And here's where you could go ahead and play with it. So if you wanted to make it brighter, for example, you could, or darker, for example, you could. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and improve the vibrance and the saturation, maybe make it pop a little bit more in terms of the color, I could do it that way. And so that might look kind of cool. And so there's just different ways that we can play with it. I could increase the contrast too if I really wanted to. That'll really make those sort of circles pop. And so, that is one way that I could play with it after the fact. Again, you don't have to. You can just take it right from PhotoP and upload it onto whatever um, you know print site that you use. But you can always play with it. You can always you know add more things if you want to. But that's essentially it. So once you've got this downloaded as a PNG, it is ready to go on whether you're using Amazon Merch On Demand or if you're doing Etsy, you could put this on Printful or Photopea, depending on what print company you use. And this could go on t-shirts or you know, just about anything else that you might think about putting it on, pillows, tote bags, sweatshirts, I mean, you name it. And so it's ready to go. And of course, now that you've got it, you can scale it out. So we still have our version up here and you would just repeat the same process and just change Las Vegas to whatever city you want it to be and keep going. And so that is one way that you can go ahead and make hundreds of New Year's designs very quickly and easily. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope you guys are already thinking about New Year's and quarter one. I did put up a video with um, quarter one um, niches that you guys should be looking into right now. So if you have any questions or comments, you know, throw it in the comment section below. I do try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. I hope your quarter four sales are doing well, and I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.